and leadership qualities during the course. Going to Cadet Officer Emmanuel Osei. Cadet Officer Emmanuel Osei was born in 1977. From Kwebu Obome, he possesses certificates in private secretaryship and a Bachelor of Science Accounting Option from the University of Professional Studies in Accra. The next award goes to Kenneth Officer Richard Lazarus Akoli. He emerges as the best masked man for course 40. Is married to my co-host at home. He's blessed with three children. He started his basic education at a business primary school and proceeded to a small case secondary school and completed in 1983 as the best science student. He joined the Ghana Police Service and passed out in February 1999 at Kofuria Police Training Depot. He has great experience in criminal investigation and has been a detective for over 23 years. He holds a diploma in public administration from GEMPA and a Bachelor of Science uh, in Strategic Communication from the African University College of Education. He is Russian trained in weapon handling and tactics, enjoying his training at Russia Institute of Improvement and Professional Skills in Moscow, Russia. He emerged as the best detective and best mask man. The same ladies and gentlemen, the next award, Best in Command and Drill, going to Cadet Officer Alison Raji at the book. Okay, that's, that's, okay, okay. The award, Best in Command and Drill, is sponsored by Africino Company, the donating one laptop and an amount of 10,000 Ghana cities with support from Mafia Water and Ayane Farms, donating a fridge. and Collins Real Estate donated an amount of 1,200 CDs. Best in command and drill going to Cadet Officer Alison Raji at Luke. The Spanish ladies and gentlemen, the overall best Cadet Officer. Cadet Officer Ernest Kofi. Profile of Best Cadet Ernest Kofi. Cadet Officer Ernest Kofi was born on the 15th day of July 1982 to Madam Sarah Hacha, a trader from Ibuku in the Western region, and the lady to see a survey from Ebulansa in the Central region. Started his basic education at the Bulansa DC primary in the Western region and completed JSS in 1996. Then proceeded to Tapa Senior School, where he obtained his secondary education certificate in the year 2000. He was enlisted into the Ghana Police Service on 1st December 2001 and trained at the Regional Police Training School, Winneba. He passed out on 15th May 2002. 
He was posted to Kase police station in the Darwin East district of the Greater Accra region. He was later attached to the CID at the station. He has been working diligently at the Criminal Investigation Department for the past 18 years. Presenting the sword of honor to the overall best cadet, Ennis Kofi. The service ladies and gentlemen, the overall best cadet officer, cadet officer Ennis Kofi. Congratulations to you, Ennis. He is being presented with a sword of honor. From His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana and Commander in Chief of Ghana Armed Forces, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. Congratulations to all award winners at this moment. I want to respectfully Request His Excellency to take his seat. Thank you, sir.
shortly I will invite His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana and Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, Nana Adodan Kori Kufuadu, to give us his address. And so that time we want to acknowledge each and every one of you present here and those of you at home watching us on the various channels. We say a very big thank you on behalf of the Acting Inspector General of Police and the Chairman of the Planning Committee for supporting us this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, please help me welcome the review officer for this morning's parade, His Excellency the President of the Republic of Ghana and Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces to give us his address. Commend them also to the spectacular drills they have put up. I must admit that one of the highlights of my presence in any of the graduation ceremonies of our security services is the skillful display of drills that are always put up. This morning's drill and the tunes from the band rank among the very best. Congratulations are in order to the Commandant of the Police Academy, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Nida Kuofe Lumuti, for this display and for the completion of the training program, which by all accounts has been a success. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the most important things of a nation are the peace and safety of its people and its territorial integrity. Article 200, Clause 3 of the Constitution of the Republic states, and I quote, the police service shall be equipped and maintained to perform its traditional role of maintaining law and order, unquote. The ultimate goal of this provision is to ensure explicitly that the ordinary citizen feels safe and can go about his or her everyday life free from the fear of crime and insecurity. The police service is further mandated by the Police Service Act of 1970 at 350 to prevent and detect crime apprehend offenders, and maintain the safety of persons and property. The effective execution of this mandate is premised on building a professional police service that is accountable, responsive, transparent, 
anxious world, and which accommodates the concerns of the general public that it serves. We want to go back to the good old days of policing, where people felt that all the efforts of the police were geared towards making their lives more comfortable. It is gratifying to note that the 2020 Global Peace Index report, compiled and released by the Institute of Economics and Peace, ranked Ghana as the second most peaceful country in sub-Saharan Africa, after Mauritius. Such a positive global outlook identifies our country as a peaceful destination for sound investments, and all of us, including the police and the citizenry, should be encouraged by such an assessment. In spite of this, we all know that we have quite some way to go towards becoming number one on the rankings. Currently, the traditional challenges to security such as chieftaincy conflicts, land disputes, religious intolerance, ethnic animosities, and political rivalry are being compounded by contemporary threats like drug and human trafficking, proliferation of small arms and light weapons, armed robberies, cyber crimes, and activities of nomadic hazard. Today, the challenges to Ghana's security are numerous, complex, and sometimes quite unpredictable. I'm aware the recent incidents of violent crimes in some parts of the country have generated safety and security concerns from several sections of the public. I want to assure Ghanaians that the police service and indeed all the other security services are determined to deal decisively with the threats posed by dangerous criminals and criminal syndicates. We can help them succeed in this endeavor if we urge the police and the other security services on and give them as much support and cooperation in the fight as we can. Government in recognition equipment and 4,500 fragmentation jackets have been procured and delivered to the service to protect officers and help ensure effective policing. The police service will take delivery of three helicopters made up of two gazelle light attack helicopters and one Airbus 350 helicopter in November this year to enhance its work. Hangers for them, located at the National Police Training School, have been completed. 
and six officers who will fly these helicopters have completed their training in South Africa. At the beginning of my mandate in 2017, there were 800 CCTV installations in the country for surveillance. At the end of my first term, that figure had gone up to 6,500. And by the end of the year, another 3,500 would have been added, making a total of almost 11,000 in the country. <laughs> Government has strengthened the cybercrime fighting capabilities of the service through the setting up of a computer emergency response team center at the National Communications Authority. The Minister of the Interior has procured, has procured three alligator silver boats to help fortify security along the country's maritime waters. This has been done in, in fulfillment of the pledge I made to expand and resource the Marine Police in order to help them work with the Ghana Navy to protect inter alia our offshore oil and gas installations. The Criminal Investigations Department, CID, has been equipped with the Digital Forensic Laboratory and for the first time in the history of the department, crime officers are given a monthly allowance to support their investigation. With the tool, the CID Forensic Science Lab, the CID building has also now become disability friendly and there is continuous training of CID officers. On addressing the housing needs of the service, the construction of 320 housing units of the National Police Training School is at an advanced stage of completion. Work is ongoing on the construction of a barracks at Pabignan to replace the one adjacent to the DVLA at 37, which is not fit for purpose. A new mechanical workshop for the service is also being constructed at Boshe near Hachu. In addition to the yearly increments of salaries for all police personnel, government has placed them, by the other members of the security services, under the CAP 30 pension scheme. Clarence has been given for the police service to recruit some 5,000 more personnel to augment the manpower base of the service in a bid to meet the recommended UN police civilian ratio of 1 to 500. Prior to this, a total of 4,000 persons were recruited into the police service from 2018 to 2020. The recruitment processes have been improved with an online application system which is built to eliminate irregularities often associated with such exercises, giving every qualified Ghanaian youth
is important that discipline prevails throughout the service. This is a charge I give the Acting Inspector General of Police and the entire police administration. Without discipline and effective supervision, winning public confidence and support to fight crime will be very problematic. The prevention and detection of crime are shared responsibilities between the police and the public. The mutual respect, confidence and support are required to achieve these goals. I cannot end without reiterating the support of government and I for the recent actions taken by the Acting Inspector General of Police, George Okufu Dampare, which are eliciting strong backing from the population. He has so far vindicated my decision to repose trust in him to hold this high office. I am confident that once the necessary processes are completed, which I am sure will be soon, you will become our nation's 23rd Inspector General of Police. For our new cadet officers who will shortly become senior officers, I advise you to step out as agents of change. The training you have undergone should have imbibed in you the values of commitment to discipline, duty, hard work, and integrity. I am hopeful that you will bring to bear the knowledge you have acquired to project positively the image of the police service. Discharge your responsibilities professionally and live above reproach. I commend all award winners, particularly Cadet Officer Ernest Kofi, for emerging as the best Cadet Officer. It is a well-deserved accolade. I expect him, and indeed all the other award winners, not to get carried away by their achievements, but rather to be spurred on to reach even greater heights in their careers as officers of the Ghana Police Service. And once again to my learned friend, Ernest Kofi, Aiko. May I, in conclusion, ask all of you to be outstanding as I formally hey! make these pronouncements. Hey! By the powers vested in me as President of the Republic, I hereby appoint the six officer cadets and 123 cadet officers to the ranks of superintendent of police, deputy superintendent of police, and assistant superintendent of police into the senior police officer corps of the Ghana Police Service. May God bless the Ghana Police Service. And that's all. And may God bless our homeland down and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention.